At this point in these lessons, you should be familiar with many of MATLAB and Octave's built-in functions such as cosine, square root, and mean. When we use functions, we call them from another program. And typically, functions will take one or more arguments as input and return one or more values as output. You can call functions as many times as you need. So here's one example using the cosine function. We send down two values, 0.5 and 0.2, as input into the cosine function. When this is executed, we have two values returned as output, the cosine of 0.5 and the cosine of 0.2. We can also lump two values into an array, 0.1 and 0.5, and send this array down into cosine. We send two values down, we get two values back, the cosine of 0.1 and the cosine of 0.5. In this example here, we say that we call the cosine function uh, two times, and different values can be passed down to cosine each time. You can type the variables directly in the argument list, or you can lump them all into an array and just send the array down. You also can make your own functions. These functions must be stored in a separate M file as the program that calls it, and the name of the M file that holds this function must have the same name as the function with a .m extension. The function name must obey the rules for naming variables and arrays. The general format for functions are the following. We have the word function, then we have our list of outputs that we want to send back to the program that called the function, our function name, and the inputs that we receive from the program that calls the function. Inside the function we have some commands, then return and end function terminates the function. In this example, this function which is called functName must be stored in a file called functName.m and multiple inputs and outputs are allowed. So here's one example. We have a program called main.m and inside of main.m we are going to call the function add one uh, multiple times. So we start off with x equals 2, then we come to an f printf statement. Add one is will be printed on the screen and then we come to a percent %i. Because we have a percent %i here, we're going to look at some value that's on the right side of this comma. In this case, it's the value of the function add one uh, and that takes an argument x as input, so x is 2. So what we do is we pass the value 2 to the add1 function, and add1 is stored in add1.m. This is a very simple function. The, all, it, all it does is take in a value, in this case 2, adds 1 to it, stores that in an output variable, when the, we're done with the function, this output variable will be sent back up to the main program uh, where we can now put the value, which is 3, where this percent %i is. So add 1 is 3 will be printed on the screen. We go down to the next line, fprintf add 1 is percent %i. So now we go over to add 1 again. In this case, we don't say x, but we say 2. We're going to pass the value 2 into x in the function. 2 plus 1 gets stored and out, so 3 gets stored and out. Out will be sent to the back up to the main program here. So add 1 is 3 will be printed on the screen again. We come to our last fprintf statement, and we say add 1 is, that will be printed on the screen, percent %i so let's see what's on the right side. Add 1 of 3. So the value of 3 is passed to x here. So 3 plus 1 is 4. Gets stored in the output variable. We come to the end of the function. So this value will be put in place of add 1. So the value of 4 will now be printed on the screen. In all these examples, it's the value of these arguments 
that's passed to the variable in the function. So in this example, I have one main program here that calls a function called div2. Div2 is defined here in a file called div2.m. One thing that's very important is that the program that calls the function must be in the same directory as the function. So here I have both main and div2 on the desktop. So let's look at main dot m and try to predict what will happen when we execute this program. We say x is 2 and y is 6. Then we say display div2x. So this is going to call the function div2x. The value of x is 2 so we pass 2 down here to this function where x uh, takes on the value of 2 now. So 2 divided by 2 is 1. That's the answer. We come to the end of the function and answer is returned as output. So the first thing that should be displayed is 1. Let's come down to the next line. Display div2 negative 8. The value negative 8 is passed down to x here in the function. Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. That is returned as output to the main program. So we should, the next thing that should be displayed is negative 4. Lastly, we have div2 of y. y is 6, so the value of 6 is passed down to x down here in the function. 6 divided by 2 is 3, and so the last thing that should be displayed is 3. We want to execute the main program, so at the command line we type main. We don't type the name of the function. And indeed we see 1, negative 4, negative 3. So again, the main function or the function that calls the program needs to be in the same directory uh, as the function, I should say. And each time we call a function, we're passing down the value, a single value, into x down here in the function. In the first case, it was 2, then negative 8, then 6 are passed into x down here in the function.